what we're going to be talking about today is the future off-highway truck and the uh, particular interests in fuel supply methods, charging, and productivity associated with such. So a quick agenda for today. Uh, we've already gone through the intro. We'll then move into vehicle energy sources. Uh, we'll talk about diesel, diesel plus trolley, as well as battery. We'll talk about power resupply capabilities. That would be dynamic or while the vehicle is moving or static methods while the vehicle is stopped. Then we'll talk about the future off-highway truck, the uh, Komatsu vision for that particular uh, type of machine, and then we'll open it up to questions. So moving into vehicle power methods, this is the uh, Komatsu vision on vehicle power methods in the near future. So as you can see, we have four different methods. We have our standard engine. Um, we'll just assume that to be diesel. And then we have battery. We'll go into that in a minute or so. We have trolley, which can be used with both battery and diesel, as well as fuel cells. Uh, we can assume that be hydrogen. Uh, that's kind of the most popular fuel cell at this time. Uh, with this being uh, discussed about uh, charging and productivity, we won't go into hydrogen much with this particular presentation. Uh, we're gonna focus mainly on battery. So as you can see with the trolley, we can use diesel plus electricity to supply energy to the wheel motors. And with hydrogen, you can also use a trolley as well as hydrogen plus electricity. So moving into diesel, we'll just talk about the quick strengths for diesel. It's a proven energy source. Uh, it's basically the industry standard for the past 100 years. Uh, approximately 28,000 large mining trucks are operating globally on diesel. It's a time-tested solution. Uh, the first successful diesel engine was produced in 1897, uh, so it is over 110 years of proven success. There's a very strong supply chain. Globally, it's very, very easy to find a diesel engine, diesel supplier, and a parts supply chain. And there's also multiple options. You can go with uh, Komatsu, CAT, MTU. Uh, there's just more than one supplier in terms of diesel engines. Now, we move into the concerns with diesel. The first is it's a significant source of mine site pollution. With the goal of decarbonization and reduction in the mining carbon footprint, uh, the mining haulage fleet is a very large source of pollution. Uh, one gallon of diesel equals about 22.4 pounds of CO2. The average annual uh, fuel consumption for a large mining truck is about 237.7 thousand gallons, which means one truck emits roughly 5.3 million pounds of CO2 annually. So if you scale that up to a fleet of say 50, 70 trucks, that is a lot of pollution annually. So the ability to reduce that or eliminate it is a massive reduction in the carbon footprint of a mine. Also, the diesel engine does have noise and vibration, which is a concern for the operator. And it is maintenance intensive. There are PM schedules with a diesel engine that are fairly rigorous. So our strengths when we move to trolley. This is the next iteration. Uh, like I said, you can use diesel uh, with trolley. So there is a speed on grade increase when compared to diesel. Uh, to explain this, I'll just use some hypothetical numbers. Uh, so say your diesel engine can only produce 60 horsepower. However, with our electric drive mining trucks, the actual uh, rotation of the wheel is achieved by a wheel motor. The wheel motor can operate up to 100 horsepower. So there's a uh, kind of a deficit of 40 horsepower there. Well, if you supply the electrical power to the electric wheel motor via trolley, you're able to supply much more power than the diesel engine is able to give. So therefore, you can actually increase your speed on grade and give that wheel motor more power than the diesel engine is able to provide. Uh, what's great with that is you can actually bring that diesel engine down to an idle state when you're on trolley. And as you guys know, going uphill on long uh, sections is where you have your highest fuel burn. And bringing the engine down to effectively idle is a great way to reduce fuel consumption while still maintaining a diesel fleet. So your fuel consumption is reduced. 
you have a speed on grade advantage, which means your productivity increases. And this uh, method can also be used for diesel, battery, or other applications. Uh, like we said, the engine is able to go to idle. If this was a battery scenario, you can also supply power to the battery and charge the battery while it is on trolley. And with uh, Komatsu, we do have a 30-year history on trolley innovation. Uh, so this is a time-tested method for power supply. Now moving into the concerns. It is a large capital investment. Trolley lines are not cheap. Uh, it is a significant capital investment for any mine site. Also, there is a significant mine planning consideration required with trolley. A long-term installation is required to maximize your return on investment. Uh, so therefore, you have to find a long-term road uh, that will be in place, say, five, ten plus years. Uh, this isn't a particular application that you can set up a trolley line and then tear it down the next year. Uh, also, a three-lane road recommendation uh, is given for trolley sections. That's for things such as shovel moves and or if you do have to perform maintenance around your trolley system, you can still achieve two-way haulage. So as you can see with our uh, previous presentations on slope design, that will affect your overall slope angle if you're moving to three lanes. Uh, there have been in the past talks of going to two lanes, things of that nature. Then you worry about single lane on hills and things of that nature if you're working underneath the trolley line. Also, the trolley lane must be well maintained. Uh, you are contacting a high voltage power cable, so you want to make sure your trolley lane is very smooth and at a right height. If you are bouncing around, you risk disconnecting from the trolley line, losing your momentum, as well as potentially ripping your pantograph off. Uh, if that happens, then of course your trolley line goes down and you have, of course, significant capital in terms of maintenance. And also availability. Um, it is a machine, so trolleys will not work every single second. So when you lose your trolley line, then you lose that speed on grade advantage. Uh, and also, if you look into the future, if you're operating, say, a battery fleet, and this is the only source to charge the battery, if the trolley line goes down, then you have lost your ability to charge the battery. So here's a quick trolley video um, from a operating iron ore mine. Uh, for those of you familiar with haulage, uh, you'll see the trolley uh, pantograph connect, and then once it reaches the grade, uh, you'll see it move up the slope at a pretty significant speed compared to normal operations off trolley. So about now it's connecting to the trolley. Once it reaches the grade, you'll see it continue up the hill at a pretty fast rate of speed compared to a normal diesel engine. So as you can see, there is a significant productivity advantage to trolley. And all while this is happening, this is a diesel engine. So the diesel engine is operating at an idle state. So anyone familiar with uh, large mining trucks and uphill haulage, it's moving pretty fast for that type of grade. So next, we'll look at battery. So the strengths of battery, it is a zero emissions platform. Uh, there's no CO2 emitted. There's no harmful gases. It's simply a battery producing or supplying the energy. Uh, there is existing technology regarding battery. Um, in terms of scalability, uh, you can scale it up to large mining equipment. You can scale it down to very small equipment. Um, for those of you in the underground coal sector, um, battery equipment at the face, um, there's very, very uh, wide range of developments and history with Komatsu and Joy. Also battery chemistry. Uh, there are multiple types of chemistries, uh, multiple types of battery designs and just finding the optimal one for your mine site is quite possible. With battery, there's a reduction in moving parts. Of course, eliminating the diesel engine uh, reduces a lot of parts, therefore reduces your maintenance intervals because you are just dealing with a battery pack. You're not dealing with an engine, an alternator, and everything of that sort. Also, you're gonna have a noise and vibration reduction. Uh, the best way to describe that is you ever sat next to an electric car, it's very quiet. There's no moving parts within the electric car for the engine itself. Uh, set that next to a Corvette or some very loud uh, engine and you'll definitely know the difference. Also, it's an emerging market. So there's a growing OEM and aftermarket supply chain. 
Uh, at this time, it's small, but with every year, it grows rapidly. Now some concerns involving battery. Uh, there is a range within each battery application. It's, like I said, application dependent. It's just like fuel consumption. If you have long uphill haulage um, profiles, then you have a greater risk of draining your battery versus downhill loaded, things of that scenario. Also, you do have uh, significant battery constraints, weight and volume. You can only put a, uh, a battery in your truck that's approximately the size of your truck. Uh, so you could put, say, a 20,000 kilowatt hour battery in there, but you'd have to probably put a trailer on the back, and that's not quite feasible. So you are considered uh, constrained to the actual volume and area within the truck. And also charging methods. We'll jump into the static and dynamic methods in a second, uh, but like we said, these are an emerging market in terms of power resupply strategies. So jumping into the resupply strategies, so let's talk about dynamic methods. So dynamic methods are mobile methods. While the vehicle is moving, we're gonna supply power to the battery or the power system. So this is perfect because your truck or vehicle does not have to stop. It can continue moving, continue through the production cycle, and you're not losing any productivity. So the first one is trolley. So the trolley is the use of an electrified cantonary wire and pantograph to power and or charge vehicle power systems. So it provides a speed on grade advantage to standard diesel, as we discussed earlier. And we do have additional power available to the wheel motors. There's an increase in productivity with a decrease in fuel consumption uh, when you're using diesel. And the optimal application for this would be long uphill loaded hauls where your engine load factor is highest and power demand is greatest. Next is dynamic retarding. That is the use of an electric traction motor as a generator when slowing the vehicle. All Komatsu electric drive trucks already have this option. Uh, currently within the diesel models, uh, the use of a generator is actually uh, mitigated. We expel the power as heat, uh, just like um, electric, diesel electric locomotives in rail. But with batteries, you can recapture that energy and store it back in the battery. So the optimal application for that would be downhill loaded hauls. If you have significant downhill applications, uh, you are able to charge the battery long term uh, on the way to the crusher or dump site. And like I said, during both methods, the diesel engine effectively goes to idle, therefore greatly reducing your fuel consumption. Next, we're gonna talk about static methods. So static methods, uh, essentially you are supplying power to the vehicle while the system is at rest. So there is an impact on productivity as compared to a standard operation, but at the time there are some trade-offs in terms of uh, extending battery life and things of that nature. So the first and simplest methods is simply plugging the vehicle in. Uh, so the vehicle is physically tethered to a power source and charged just like uh, say an electric car in your garage at night or uh, your iPhone next to your bed stand. So it allows for fast charging capabilities. Uh, you can supply a lot of power into the battery. You can charge multiple units at once. You could have say a power bank or say a ready line where you can plug all of your trucks in at once. It's a very mobile and versatile operation. Simply if you have power, then you're able to supply a cable to charge your truck. Uh, you can do everything from set up say a solar farm, uh, split off your shovel cable, things of that nature, and allow for static charging. So the optimal applications for this would be mines with short-term short roads or long wait time. So if you have an excessive queue at the loader, say seven, eight, 10 minutes, uh, this would be a perfect time for the truck to stop and load. And while it's stopping, there's putting the load on the battery and it's charging. Next is battery swap. It's the uh, Onboard battery is physically removed, a new one is replaced. This allows for the battery to optimally charge in a battery bank, just like battery haulers in underground coal mines. You can have a large battery bank uh, to allow for optimal battery life. It's a faster method because you're simply just removing the old battery, putting a new fully charged one in, so there's no charge time, so to speak. 
and the optimal application is mines with resources to facilitate battery swaps. So you'd probably need a battery bay or battery building to achieve this. And so potential static charging locations would be your loading area, dump locations, ready line, or break areas, anywhere where the truck is at idle. So let's talk about the future off-highway truck. So the Komatsu vision was uh, outlined at Mine Expo uh, 2021. Uh, this is our test platform shown at the convention. So the goal of our vision is when selecting a haulage fleet, you must accommodate cute, uh, current and future haulage requirements. So since an EDT fleet can operate in excess of 20 years, you're not planning for 2023, you're planning for 2043 with this fleet as well. So our vision is one truck, multiple power solutions. And at the bottom, you can see a uh, potential scenario I've outlined real quickly. Uh, say this truck number 22, you buy it year one as a diesel truck. Then year three, you add on the trolley system. And then year 10, you add in the battery. So it's the same truck platform with multiple power solutions available without significant updates and upgrades.